Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel today. Today I have a different type of a video for you today. It's a cooking video. I'm going to make a tomato basil garlic cheese tortellini soup. And <clears throat> I have all my ingredients laid out right here. And I got a pan warming up a little bit so I can put my sauteed vegetables in. And this is what we're going to accomplish today. So, without any further ado, let's move along with the video. Okay, my video, okay, my video um, camera just shut off. I was saying, probably after supper, I'm going to be going somewhere with my husband for a ride and try to... Um, <clears throat> take advantage of this nice weather. So, I'm just break this up a little bit. I'm cutting the best I can with the knife that I have right now. Um, I do with what I got. I don't have all those fancy, you know, kitchen utensil things and this and that. I have the basic stuff, so. Okay, more of this celery. I don't have a cutting board, believe it or not. I do not own one. I just cut right here on top of the clean countertop. Clean my countertop off every night before I go to bed, but I also clean it off several times a day because I'm always using the countertop for cooking or also um, other things that, you know, laying mail on this that. I don't want those germs on my food, so, Yeah. So, just try to break this up a little bit. Got some stringy business going on here from the celery. And that takes care of that. So, that's two stalks um, or sleeves or whatever you call it of the celery right here. And I'm going to be adding that to the pot. Okay, just push that over there for a moment. All right, then I have some baby carrots. You can use whatever you have, you know, whole carrots or canned carrots if you want. I'm just going to throw in some of these baby carrots and just cut them down a little finer. To be about equivalent to the amount of celery. Okay, just make it like about equal. I don't go by, you know, cups and this and that and all that. Other stuff. I, I just want the carrots to be equivalent to the amount of celery. When it looks like it's about right, that's when you can stop. You know, when they're equal to each other. I'm not counting or anything. Um, as you see me pulling the baby carrots up, you know, if you want to count, you know, you can do that too. I'm um, getting close. Yeah, I don't know, maybe that was about 10, 11, maybe carrots. That's about equivalent to the amount of celery I have. Maybe just one more small one. Okay, that's enough of the carrots. Then, I have a Vidalia onion here. I'm going to chop this up also. Do 
do everything the old way because I don't have all those modern appliances and um, cutters and choppers and food processors. So I usually just take my onion and cut it like this, but don't go all the way, all the way through. Cut it like this. I forgot who showed me this, but it works really well. So just keep cutting it across. Okay, then cut it again, like this. That it looks like a checkerboard. Okay, then just take your knife and cut down and you got perfectly chopped onion. I would say that's probably about equivalent, but let's just go for a little more. Always have onion on hand. Whatever you don't use, you can wrap up or stick it in another recipe, you know, if you're making something ahead of time for another meal. So, yeah, that's more than enough onion. Okay, so I'm going to get my trusty little... It, and I'm going to scrape my onion skin, my celery, and my carrots. Oh, the smell of this olive oil smells so good. Okay. I got everything in the pot, as you see, back on the stove. I'm going to let that saute for a few minutes. I'm going to try to get rid of these garbage things here, trimmings from the uh, onion and the little celery things. Okay. Now, I'm going to saute this mixture for a couple minutes, stir it around, get it nice and soft. Let it soften up. Turn the heat up a little more. I'm sorry I don't have a tripod yet, so I just have to leave my phone up against um, what I can. Okay. And let that saute a little more. I'm going to add a little extra olive oil because the amount of vegetables that I have there, that should be more than enough now. Don't want it floating in it. Just, you know, enough to season it and everything. So, yeah, I'm going to let that cook for some minutes here now. Okay, and I'll be back in a few minutes as soon as I get this softened, okay? Okay, now that my vegetables are sauteing quite well, right there, and I'm going to add to this, you can add um, whatever you want, chicken stock, chicken bone broth, um, just chicken broth, uh, broth by itself, stock broth, beef broth, or chicken, whatever you prefer. I'm using this one here. This is the Simply Nature. I think this is from Aldi's. I think so. This is the beef stock. And this here is um, 32 ounces, 2 pounds. So I'm going to add probably about a cup of this. Yeah, I'm going to add about a cup. So 
I dumped that in now. Okay, then I'm going to still leave it boiling. You know, get this to boil. Bring that up to a boil. And I'm going to add in some tomato sauce. You can use canned tomato sauce, jarred tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, whatever you got. Uh, tomatoes in the can and, you know, smash them up if you want. But I'm going to use this, um, the Reggiano from Aldi. This is the tomato, basil, and garlic pasta sauce. I'm going to add two cans of this to my mixture right there. If I need to add more beef broth, I will. If I can get these jars open. Oh my God. Mm, I have to get another knife. These are really on here suckerly tight, let me tell you. Let's see if I could pop it with a knife under the lid. Try this trick on the countertop. Yeah, that worked better. Okay, one to dump. See, everything's getting nice and soft in there. Okay, I'm going to add in the tomato sauce. You can adjust this to how you need it. Um, This one is really on you. Okay. Now, in order to clean your spaghetti sauce jars out, just add a little water. Just add a little water and shake. That way you get anything that's clinging around the jar itself. I remember my grandmother's and my mother doing this. Shaking, you know, the jar up with a little tiny bit of water to get it out. Okay, throw that in. And you could add meat to this dish if you choose to. You can put ground sausage in here. You can put ground beef in here. Um, you can put chicken in there, ground or even like um, chunk up chicken. Um, could possibly even put some like stew cubes or beef cubes, small, cut them up and add them. That way you have some meat in with this um, pasta dish. Okay, everything is coming together really, really well. And let me just give it a taste. Mmm, it tastes really good, but I'm going to doctor it up just a little bit. I can really taste the Italian spices in that basil garlic. That's why I love that sauce so much. Other ones I find flattening. I'm going to use about a slightly rounded tablespoon of sugar in my sauce. Okay, then I'm going to add in more garlic. I'm going to add in possibly a half of a rounded tablespoon. Put that in. There. Okay, I'm going to add some salt. Salt it to your liking. I wanted that, you know, there's some flavor there. And also. pepper to your liking. I use probably about a teaspoon, maybe a little less than that. Okay, you can put ricotta cheese in this if you want, you know, sprinkled ricotta or freshly grated ricotta, but I'm, I am mean Parmesan. Parmesan, any version of Parmesan cheese. If you want to add that to this, you can. I'm not adding it to mine. 
Okay, I'm going to put in a little bit of um, onion powder. Just sprinkle in some onion powder. To your liking, to your taste. Um, that was the onion powder. I'm going to sprinkle in some garlic powder. Even though I just put minced garlic in there and the sauce had some in, I'm still going to add some more garlic powder to your liking, of course. Um, a little bit of oregano leaves, not too many, um, but whatever your taste is, you, just, you can adjust this to whatever you want. I'm just putting in probably about two pinches worth of the oregano. Also putting in a little bit of Italian seasoning. Same story to your liking. I'm putting in about two or three pinches of the Italian seasoning. Also putting in some bay leaf. This is the crushed bay leaf. You can buy the whole ones and just set them in there and let them simmer. But um, this is the crushed here. So I'm using probably about a teaspoon. You can adjust it to your liking, like I'm telling you. And I got this, I think, in the Dollar Tree. It was by the um, Cologne, Coloma brand, this product that they carry. Well, this is in the tomato basil seasoning. So I thought, let's add some, see what it's like. So I can get it out of here. Okay, I'm just going to add about a teaspoon and a half of this. I don't know what's all in it, but it's going in the pot. All right. Now, just going to let this cook for a little while. Keep stirring, keep simmering. Bring it up to like medium. You want those veggies to be soft. Okay, I'm going to taste it again because of my seasonings. Mmm. It's even more better than just the sauce by itself with the tomato, basil, and garlic. Oh my god, so much really rich tasting, flavorful. So anyway, you want it to be like a loose sauce. Um, let me see what I can do here. Okay, so here it is. We have it cooking. And like, like I said, you want it to be like a loose sauce. You don't want it to be too runny, but you don't want it to be over chunky either. So you just want it that it's nice and smooth and velvety. And again, like I said, you can add your Parmesan cheese if you want now or later. Any version from the grated, freshly grated to shred it already for you. Um, or the stuff in the shaker cans. Whatever you want, you can add. And then you can top it off with some more later if you need to. But I'm not putting any in mine right now. I'm going to wait till the very end when I sit down to eat. And then I'll put grated cheese on my end. Um, at this point here also, let it cool just a little tiny bit. And then you can add some whipping cream to this. Or you can add some half and half and make a blush sauce instead of a rich tomato one like I got here going. Okay. And I need to... Pause the camera and flip it around again because I'm going to be adding the cheese tortellinis. All right. I'm going to be adding three packages of these um, Priano cheese tortellinis. These are each 8.8 .8 ounce packages. I'm going to be putting three of them in my soup sauce right here from um, Aldi's. Bought these at Aldi's too. They have other flavors too. You can um, 
pick whatever you want. They have the tricolor pastas too. And they have different flavor ones. Now these ones are in the regular aisle where the regular pasta is. But then they have tortellinis up in the refrigeration area. Not freezer. Refrigeration. So I'm going to put these into my sock right now. All three packages of these. Let these cook in the sauce. Let me turn this down because it's starting to splash everywhere. That's the only thing I hate about sauce and gravies. They have a tendency to splash all over the stove all the time. And you have to clean the entire stove when you're done. And your countertop. And the wall up behind your sink. Because that's just the way it goes. Now these pastas look like they've been cooked to me. And then somehow processed with a drying. They're not uh, gummy in any kind of a way. You can cook these separately if you choose to, but I, I, I'm not going to. I'm just throwing them right in my sauce. And hubby's going to be coming home very soon. And he's going to be sitting down here because I'm sure he's hungry. Sorry, I don't have a lot to talk about um, when I'm cooking. I try to concentrate on what I'm doing. And um, it's usually my other videos where I'm a lot more gabbier. So, um, still trying to get these in here. They're processed and squished to each other. Not squished, making a mess. They're just stuck to each other because of what I said. They had it go through some kind of um, boiling and blanching type of a process and then maybe drained a little. But when they put them together, they, they stick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, they cluster to each other. You need to break it up a little bit. So... This is great with some garlic um, toast, a uh, little salad on the side, whether it be an Italian salad, um, you know, basic, regular, everyday toss salad or a Caesar salad, um, glass of wine, if you drink wine, if not, soda, iced tea, lemonade, whatever you got. My husband loves cheese tortellini, so, so do I. We also love, love raviolis, and we love anything that has ricotta cheese in. Let's just put it that way. Manicotti, you name it. I have manicottis, which I'll be making those soon, and I might have a video up about those. So, I'm going to bring the camera over again, and I'm going to show you what I got here. Now, you want this to simmer probably for... Another 20, 20, 25 minutes, and then it should be ready for um, eat time. So let me turn the camera around again. And here we have it. You can put some fresh basil and parsley, you know, on top of it to garnish it when you're um, serving it up for yourself, just to make it a little um, formal. <laughs> Or if you're serving this um, for supper with family, in-laws, friends, whatever. But there, there you have it. This is a cheese tortellini, tomato, and spice dinner. It is supposed to be soupy-like. So, until I see you all again, everyone, be good, be kind, keep your spirit up, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bon appetit.